Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be continuing our China vs Vietnam scenario and we're going to be concentrating mostly on the initial little triggers that are kind of deciding whether or not we win this scenario as well as, you know, kind of handling some of the, the special actions and stuff like that. So first things first, uh, if you have been watching these all along, uh, you're probably familiar with what we've done so far. We went ahead and set up a really, really nice solid Vietnamese Air Force as well as Vietnamese Navy. We've also set together a couple Chinese little groups down here as well as uh, some aircraft that we can use up in this direction. So uh, first things first, uh, we know that we have a carrier action group up on this side of things. We basically equip them with uh, absolutely nothing so far. We're going to kind of think about the overall strategy of the player before we start equipping them. And of course, uh, we also have our basically our amphibious action group up this way as well. And this particular, if I'm kind of thinking about my scenario properly, this group is going to be the most important target of both sides. Uh, basically, the Chinese Navy is going to be protecting it so that it can get to be able to do amphibious operations. And simultaneously, the Vietnamese Navy is going to try to concentrate as much as it can to destroy it. Because remember, typically, uh, these are going to be troop transports, uh, these are going to have aircraft, they're going to have helicopters, and based on the distances involved, again, if we want to get the nearest land to this, that's a 534 nautical mile flight if you're going to be doing any kind of paratroopers or anything along those lines. So the priority one here is probably going to be kind of concentrating, capturing the islands, just like we sort of established before. So most likely what the Chinese Navy is going to try to do here is basically create kind of like a little safety buffer around the zone to let the amphibious action group basically swiggity swoop in here. The big thing here is, however, that the uh, Vietnamese do have some very very, very capable kilo class submarines available. So from the Chinese perspective, their biggest fear is not going to be the um, Vietnamese Air Force, but it's going to be the Vietnamese subsurface assets. So a lot of our focus from a gameplay perspective is probably going to be concentrating on those while, you know, avoiding the cheap shot that, you know, the Vietnamese can basically send in in the form of a bunch of aircraft. Again, the Vietnamese would be concentrating on preservation of assets more so than be doing aggressive attacks. They're obviously going to try picking that one target that they know they can go for, but throwing away their entire Air Force against a massed attack against a very, 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 very well defended action group. It's just going to be a waste of time and energy. So again, we're going to have to kind of see how that's going to play out as we experiment. And some of you are probably saying, well, no, the Chinese Navy would never do that. The Vietnamese Navy never would do that. Um, this is hypothetical. So who actually knows? All right, let's do it to it. So first things first, let's just set up our little goal that's uh, going to go ahead and succeed here. So I know down here, this is going to be kind of the ending point of the Navy group. So if I actually select this group real quickly and hit F2, my uh, flank speed is going to be 23 knots. So you're probably saying, why do we care? Well, uh, 204 nautical miles. So if we go 23 divided by 204, oh, pfft. I can't believe I just did that. 206 divided by 24 means it's going to take 8.58 hours. And uh, let's go ahead and calculate that a little more closely here. 58 times 60. It's going to take 8 hours and 17 minutes at flank speed in order to get into position there. Now, this is an interesting problem. And uh, we can definitely take advantage of this from a player's perspective. Right now, we have one day to go as far as this scenario is concerned. So let's make things interesting. And uh, first of all, let's put a time limit on the scenario. So I'm actually going to set this for 12 hours to go. Now the scenario has completely, completely changed. This means this amphibious action group is going to have to haul to get into the range that they need to be in order to succeed at this particular mission. That means that the subsurface assets now are going to have a much, much easier time of detecting them. Now our scenario is starting to shape itself up a little bit here. Now we've got some strategy. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up our victory condition here, and that's going to assume we can get our amphibious action group into this this little zone down here. So what I'm going to do, well, pfft, I've only done that a million times. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here. I'm going to create myself a little group. So uh, usually, typically, when you create groups that the user is not supposed to be playing with, you have the ability to go ahead and uh, lock these with this option right here. This works fairly effectively. So I'm going to go ahead and deselect all my reference points that I have from before. I'm going to hold down the control, right click. I'm going to say add area. We'll do a rectangle. And this is going to be kind of my victory zone. So whenever you do victory zones or anything like that, I usually recommend people label them so people are very, very clear. Uh, victory zone, we'll call this uh, Northwest, a control A, control C kind of a thing. Grab this one over here. We're going to go ahead and paste that one. Well, we're going to call this uh, Northeast. Grab this one down here as well. Control R, control V. We're going to go ahead and call this one Southeast as well. I'm going to grab this one over here. I'm going to rename that one as well. And again, this is going to be Southwest. Good. I'm going to select all my points, and we're going to go ahead and set our, our first trigger. So I'm going to go up to uh, our event editor right here, press events. Go ahead and create new event. Um, Chinese victory. Let's go ahead and say this it does not need to be repeatable, but it does need to be active. Let's go ahead and edit our triggers. We're going to go ahead and create ourselves a new trigger. We'll say uh, unit enters area. So go ahead and hit that option right here. Uh, Chinese AAG enters target 
region. That seems very specific. So we'll go ahead and set this to China. We'll go ahead and set this to uh, surface ship. We're going to go ahead and set this to, we'll call it the LHD. That seems fair. Target class, we can select a specific one. If we wanted to, of course, we could go LPD. We could select a specific one as well. We could also say LSM and grab one of these as well. So we have some pretty good choices. Ideally, you could design these so any of these particular ones could be inside of this zone. But again, that's completely up to you how you want to do it. In this case, I'm going to pick the LHD. Uh, we can pick a particular one. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to stress about it. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here. I'm going to add the area it needs to be inside. Now, this is an important, important feature up here in the top right. We need to go ahead and define when they can be or cannot be in here. So the local time right now is 730. And the latest time, of course, if you do 7.5 plus 12, means it's going to be 1930 at the maximum. So uh, let's go ahead and establish these. So first of all, make sure the date's correct. I've done this 100 times too. You have no idea. You don't want to know. And go ahead and set this to the minimum time. So for us, we can do a pretty early minimum time here. So obviously, I don't know how the user would be able to get here earlier than 730, but I assume it's impossible. Um, so we'll go ahead and say 730 in the morning, and we'll say at the absolute max. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Zulu time. Watch out, watch out, watch out. We'll say 2330, and we'll say the absolute maximum time. Let's go ahead and do this. So we'll say 23.5 plus 12, and we're going to go ahead and mod that by 24, and that should get us our lucky time here. It's going to be 11.30. Uh, it's going to be pretty darn late, but um, it'll work pretty well for us. So I'll say 11.30.00, and we're going to go ahead and set this to the following date. Make sure you click the Set Times button. So this says between... I've already goofed up. <laughs> That's what happens when uh, you're an American and you have to use uh, the different dating systems. It throws you off pretty quickly. So we can see the earliest time possible is going to be 8.15, which is fine, August 15th. That's good. And our latest, of course, is going to be uh, August 16th as well. So uh, that looks like it's going to be pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and set time. I'm going to press the OK button. I'm going to go ahead and close this one out, and we're going to go ahead and add this trigger. I've done this 100 times too. Uh, we can add conditions. You don't have to add a conditions. I usually just do a scenario started condition. Uh, scenario started. Some people like to make it not. Again, the scenario doesn't start until people actually start the scenario. I know that sounds weird, but that's actually can matter in some cases. I'm going to go ahead and close that. I'm going to throw that one down here. I'll add that one as well. And let's go ahead and create the actions. So I'm going to click on Edit Actions. I'm going to go ahead and uh, create, first of all, let's create some points. So the Chinese Navy, um, they're going to be interested in preser preserving their assets at the same time as being successful in this scenario. So i got to think about roughly what the point value for this is. You know, is it going to be worth an aircraft carrier in order to achieve this goal? If it is, we have to take that as kind of our basis and work backwards. So I'm just going to start by calling it 400, 500 points add to China. And that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to say China. Again, I don't know what this value is. Uh, the balancing the scenario out is something we have to do a little later on. So that works pretty well. I'm also going to add a new action, which is just going to end the scenario and scenario. And this scenario, oh, I love that. Nice and efficient. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to go ahead and add both of those. So we're going to give China 500 points. We're also going to end the scenario, which we have here. So if they enter the region, the scenario has started. We're going to go ahead and add 500 points, and we're going to end the scenario. Make sure this one's clicked active. Make sure it's is shown. Looks delightful. I'm going to press file. I'm going to press save now. Okay, so now we're starting to get somewhere. We can now win this mission. So now what we need to start thinking about a little bit is um, what are we going to do as far as you know, losing points or gaining points? You know, is the Chinese going to gain points by crippling the infrastructure of the other country? Is China going to, um, is VMEs going to be gaining points by doing so. The interesting thing is since this scenario is going to be China only, by the way, we said it China only by making it um, computer only for the other two sides. Um, we only care about Chinese points. So I'm going to go up to the editor. And uh, one thing that I do like to do is edit my scoring. So this is our victory and our defeat thresholds. In this case, you can see a disaster would be minus 100. A triumph would be 100. So I'm actually going to set this to 500 points here, which is a little weird. And we're just going to call it disaster. Anything less than zero points, uh, you done goofed. So our average is going to be about 250, which means when we think about our point values of our individual destroyers and frigates and everything along those lines, we're going to have to be thinking about it in terms of that particular value. You know, how many frigates is it worth to be able to capture that zone? But we'll think about that a little later. I'm going to go ahead and click save real quickly. And now our scenario is starting to come together nicely. And I like this. This is starting to get fun. Okay. So next thing what we're going to do is uh, we're going to quickly go ahead and uh, design it so that um, we can have losses as well. So I'm going to go ahead and say unit actions. I'm sorry, my bad. I'm going to go to a unit mode. I'm going to do events. Let's create one. We'll call Chinese major ship loss. We'll say this is repeatable because it's perfectly possible. We're going to go ahead and edit our triggers. We're going to add a new trigger. Unit is destroyed. So um, we're going to say large Chinese vessel destroyed. Um, well, actually, we have to get a little more specific than that. You'll see what I mean in just a second. So notice I can say any side, but the problem is 
look at how many different categories of ships I have here. Pretty much anything that is not an FFG or not a DDG is going to be the one that we're interested in, which is actually kind of a bummer, which means we have to duplicate this a few times. So I'm going to say large Chinese vessel destroyed. I'm going to press the OK key. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that because I'm way too lazy to go ahead and I'll copy this out a few more times. We actually need to duplicate it a few different times because we're actually going to have to go in here and tweak this so that it represents each different ship. So I'm going to come up here and I'm just going to say LHD, Chinese vessel destroyed, close. Uh, we're going to edit this one. We're going to make this one a little bit more specific. We're going to call this LSM. Again, we're just trying to be as specific as possible. There are other ways to do this using Lua. You can actually detect a specific type of ship class and then work backwards. Um, this is just kind of the lazy and quick way to do it. And it's kind of the way I've always done it. Because like I said, sometimes it's just easier to do it this way. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and close that one. So we have LHD. I have LHD twice because I'm just lame like that. I think I meant to do LPD. So I'm going to call this LPD again so I don't make myself insane later on. Go ahead and close that one as well. Go ahead and clone that one. Now let's grab this one as well. Edit selected. Let's go ahead and switch this from LPD to CG. CG, obviously losing a CG is a big deal. So we don't want to lose one of those. I'll make sure I did that correctly. Yep, I'm looking good. And then we'll clone it uh, no more times because I think we got all the big ships. Let me just confirm that real quick. Nope, we have CV. Obviously, that would be the most high value target. But you know what? Why not? Let's have some fun. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to type in CV. I'm going to go ahead and set this one to CV, which would be carrier. And that looks good to me. So any of these losses are going to be game over for us. Or not game over, it's serious point loss. So let me go ahead and say any of these are valid triggers. So that's the nice thing here is any are valid triggers. So let's see, we have an add trigger. That could happen. 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 Nice. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and add our tradition. Scenario started, and we're going to go ahead and create a new action. We'll call it points. Create new action. So if we lose a major vessel, 500 points loss. Let's make it interesting. So we'll go ahead and say China. We'll go ahead and say minus 500. That's a ferocious, ferocious point loss. So that looks actually pretty good there. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that. Go ahead and do 500 point loss. Nice. So let's go add that. Don't forget to click add. Otherwise, nothing happens. So this is good. So if we lose a major Chinese vessel, we lose 500 points, which means even if we win the scenario, we can still lose the scenario. That's pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to clone that. But before I do that, I just want to check something real quick. Yeah, I'm good. All right, let's go ahead and edit this one. I'm going to call ahead this one on. Chinese minor ship lost. That is not a minor ship. That is a minor ship. <laughs> this sounds the same, right? All right, so let's go ahead and add a trigger. So uh, we're going to go ahead and clone the one we did before. We'll do it twice just because I'm lazy. Edit. Let's grab this one. Uh, we're going to call this one our FFG. If we lose an FFG, it is not the end of the world. Go ahead and call this one FFG, Chinese vessel lost. And we'll go ahead and edit this one and we'll go grab our, I think we have a DDG as well. Yes, we do. So we'll say DDG, Chinese vessel lost. Close, close. So we'll go ahead and add both of these in here. We'll say DDG. And we'll also say FFG. Uh, the scenario has to have been started. 500 points lost seems a little steep. So how much is losing a frigate or a destroyer worth to China? Well, it depends on how big your navy is. I mean, if you lose one, you have 600 of them. Yeah, it's a big deal, loss of life, but it's not that big a deal. So in this case, if we lose a single big ship, it's going to cost us 500. So losing a single little ship, I'm going to make half of that value. I think that's fair. All right, I'm going to call this uh, China loses 250 points. That seems fair. So we'll go ahead and say minus 250. We'll make sure it says China. I've always made that mistake plenty of times. Uh, so 500 point loss, make sure it's negative. Yep, good. 500 points add, this should be a positive number. I just want to confirm that it works. Okay, looks good. So now I'm going to come in here, 500 point loss, it's a little steep. We're going to go 250 point loss. Boop, press okay. Yes, okay. Make sure this is set to repeatable. So the last thing we're going to be interested in here is aircraft loss. Ideally, you're not going to lose a lot of airplanes. If this whole scenario lost four airplanes, you probably did pretty decent. So I'm going to go ahead and clone it one more time. Again, this is the fun part of making a scenario. Chinese aircraft loss. I'm going to assume they're all worth the same. Obviously, if we had, you know, tuple of 16s or something like that, or each 16s I should say, that's going to have a very different value than losing, you know, a J-15 or something like that. But again, we'll try to keep it fairly straightforward here. So add a trigger. Uh, add a trigger. I'll go ahead and say unit is destroyed. Create a new one. Obviously, we're not counting damaged units, but we can have a little bit of fun with that too. We'll do that in a minute. So Chinese aircraft loss. I'm going to come over here, go ahead and call it AI aircraft. We'll call this uh, China. We'll say any aircraft. I'm not going to worry about specific types of aircraft. Again, you could get very fancy and nitty gritty, but it is your scenario, not my scenario at that point. All right, Chinese aircraft lost. I'm going to come down here, edit actions, create a new one, points. Oh, we'll call them uh, 25 points. 25 point lost China. We'll say China, and we'll say minus 25. Okay. 
close that one. I'm just going to confirm that we did that correctly. Boop. Remove that one. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Wrong. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Press OK. Delightful. We want to make sure that one is also repeatable. I'm going to quickly save the scenario. So now we're in good shape. We have a point system. Uh, that means we can lose a few aircraft. Obviously, we're considering aircraft to be kind of expendable for this mission, because if you lose more than four of them, then it's going to start eating into that successful victory. So the Chinese goal here is going to be lose four aircraft or less to the Vietnamese. Vietnamese is going to be a little different. So let's go ahead and pop back over to the event editor, and let's go ahead and uh, count something if we manage to get one of the Vietnamese aircraft instead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new event. Uh, Vietnamese, Vietnam aircraft loss. I'm going to make this one repeatable. Let's go ahead and create a new one. I'll say unit is destroyed. Create a new one. Vietnam aircraft loss. Again, you can be as specific as you want when you do this. These are your scenarios. We're just going to set it to general aircraft. I'm not going to go nuts here. Obviously, we can get a lot of free points with this, so kind of be careful there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, set so I'm going to go ahead and set that over here. Scenario started. And we'll go ahead and create a new point section. And uh, let's see, not going to be much. We'll call it 10 points. China, 10 points. Cool. And now we're all set as far as that goes. Now, on the flip side, if we manage to get a victory against a subsurface asset, we've probably done a really, really good job. So let's set that up as well. All right, so subsurface is going to be pretty much the same idea. I'll go ahead and create another one. Uh, unit is destroyed. Create new one. Vietnamese sub lost. Obviously, shooting, killing one of the subs is going to be one of the priorities as far as uh, China is going to be. So anything in the submarine category, I'm not going to set a subtype here. But what I am going to do while I'm here is I'm going to go ahead and do that for a surface asset as well. And again, you can be very particular as far as what type of surface asset you're doing. But again, since there's not anything that has crazy, crazy value, not to say they're not valuable, they totally are. Um, again, we can take a look at this very interestingly as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Looks pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of that one. We'll do a Vietnamese ship lost. Go ahead and throw that in there. Go ahead and remove that one. Ship lost. Scenario started. Add 10 points. Um, I think it'd be worth a little bit more than that. So let's go ahead and uh, create ourselves a new one. We'll go ahead and uh, give us 25 points for that one. Uh, even 25 points is a little steep. <laughs> so you know what? I'm going to go with 15 points here. We'll do points. Create new. Uh, destroy enemy. Or actually, I should never say that. Vietnamese. Uh, what am I even saying? Add 15 points. There we go. So I'm actually going to reduce my 10 points in my aircraft because I don't think that's fair either. So I'm going to make that one 15 points. Press OK. Uh, let's go ahead and edit this one. I'm actually going to reduce this, which will automatically reduce that other one as well. There we go. Now we're in business. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that or add 5 points. I'm going to go ahead and throw and add 15 points. So if we destroy any ship, we automatically get ourselves uh, 15 points. So let me go ahead and take a look at what I've done here. Uh, looks pretty good. I'm going to press OK. So unfortunately, I did something silly. I didn't name it properly. Vietnam ship lost, which gives us 15 points. I'll press OK. Let's go ahead and clone that and set it up for sub as well. Uh, Vietnam sub lost. All right, nice. Go ahead and remove this. Edit triggers. Let's go ahead and uh, I think we already had one for sub. There it is. Nice. So I'm going to go grab that one real quickly. Toss it on there. Scenario started. We're going to make that one worth 30 points. So I'm just going to add 50. Oh, we've already got 15 points. Let's go ahead and create a new action. Let's go do points. Add 25 points. I like that. Side China, 25 points. Okay, now we have our structure. Let's go ahead and chase this one out real fast. I'm going to add that one in. Take that one out. And 25, repeatable, done. Nice. Now we have a lot of opportunities to make up for any losses that we have. So if we slaughter a bunch of ships with anti-ship missiles or something, we're in great shape. Unfortunately, from a balance perspective, if I decide to declare war on the entire Vietnamese Navy, let's say I want to go after all of these ships, I could end up netting something like 1,000 points, even though I didn't really earn it. So kind of keep that in mind. And as a designer, absolutely make sure it's worth it. Because any smart player is going to grab these aircraft and as fast as they can launch them in this direction with a bunch of bombs and basically work over the Vietnamese Navy. Uh, of course, there will be losses, but the losses are a pretty fair trade depending on how you want to approach it. So keep that in mind as a designer. Okay, so now we're starting to get to the fun part where we're actually going to kind of try everything out and see what we're going to do here. We've got our little victory zones. Uh, we've got our victory conditions. I've saved everything. I'm going to double check to make sure my scenario features and settings looks okay. That's exactly what I wanted it to be, which is awesome. It means the submarines cannot communicate with each other, which is a bit problematic, but actually it'll work pretty well. 
Now what we're going to take a look at is the initial disposition. So if we wanted to, we could leave the aircraft completely empty of any form of loadout here. If we did something along those lines, then what's going to happen here is um, the player is going to have to be like, ooh, let me ready arm this aircraft. But they're going to end up with a three or even ten hour loading time. If we do something like that, we'd run into the problem where the entire scenario is spent loading the aircraft, not using them for fun. So we have to think, actually kind of predict a little bit, what would be the most likely strike force that they'd have? Because remember, they're only going to have enough time to go down here, do their strike force and reconnaissance thing, bail, and then basically rearm by the time the amphibious group gets into position here, which I think is actually, again, kind of tricky if you ask me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of do kind of a balanced approach here. So at the F6. So now that we're on this page here, we can kind of work this out. So we have the J-15Ds, we have the J-15Ss, we have the Super Freylons, and of course we have the Z-9s. So most likely our Z-18s are going to be concentrating on basically doing anti-surface warfare, which is going to be, uh, not, what am I saying, anti-submarine warfare. It's the same acronym, not really. So I'm going to grab all of these helicopters and set them all to be, uh, be a, go ahead and have these little torpedoes and sono buoys. Press those and they're going to be ready to go. These helicopters are the most important things they have. Now if the Vietnamese were clever, which they will be, they will try to destroy these helicopters because with Without them, the Chinese Navy is going to be at a bit of a disadvantage or a handicap as far as finding those Kilo submarines. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these two Z9s. I'm going to go ahead and set these ones up as well. And we can go ahead and set these with all sorts of fun tools, including the YU-11 torpedo. This is not a nice little boring thing. This is quite an effective system. So now we have plenty of anti-submarines. So we have the S model and we have the D model of our growlers here. So uh, we have a crew of two on this one. We have our crew of, I believe it's two on this one. Oh, did I just say one? I think it was one, yeah. So these are gonna be more for our fighters. These are gonna be more for our ground attack aircraft. So typically on a, a decent ship, uh, usually about a third of your aircraft are gonna be in some kind of maintenance at all time. So I'm just gonna come up here, except that the maintenance is unavailable. Come on down here, set these all as it might need some available as well. So now we can go ahead and arm everybody up. So these aircraft are going to be primarily for combat air patrol. So I'm going to go ahead and grab these. We'll standard cap. We'll make it quick. Again, we got a war on. We don't have time to reload. Come on down here. We'll grab all these. Ready arm these as well. We'll set these to be our attackers. Now we have a couple different choices here. We have the AK, which is designed for a standoff strike if you want to do some damage. We also have 500 kilogram, which general purpose bombs, uh, which work fairly well as well. And unfortunately, we don't have any laser guided weapons and we don't have any cruise missiles here. So this is a little tricky. We do have anti-radiation missiles, which are kind of fun. And usually I usually do a split of those or a group of these to kind of compensate for everything else. So let's do a nice little mix. So we'll go ahead and take these two and have them have anti-radiation missiles. I will do four of these, which is a lot. And we'll also take this crew down here. And we'll basically equip them with a pretty typical loadout. We're not expecting hardened targets. So we probably want to take as many bombs as we can, not bigger bombs. So I'm going to grab a huge group of those as well. So now we have a bunch of bombers, we have a bunch of uh, anti-radiation missiles, as well as plenty of air support as far as that goes. Over on the AAG group, uh, we have a bunch of these aircraft uh, equipped with A2244Ss. Uh, basically what this is, is an anti-ship missile. It's nothing too, too crazy, but it'll work perfectly for us. Let's go pop up top now and uh, see what we have as far as this goes. Before I do that, though, I'm going to quickly save my scenario. So up up here, uh, we have a bunch of MiG-21s. A MiG-21 is a combat air patrol kind of an aircraft. So I'm just going to assume of this group of 18, I'm just going to pick eight of them at random, which looks pretty good. And we're going to go ahead and equip them basically for that particular purpose. I really do not expect those other aircraft to be doing anything else. So what I will do, though, to be nice to the player, is I'll take this extra group of four, and I'll go ahead and say that um, they're going to be ready in a little while. You just got to give it some time. And the last group, of course, I'm going to set these guys to maintenance mode so the user can't use them. But the Vietnamese aircraft can basically get a cheap shot on them if they wanted to. Swinging down on this side of things, so we have a couple different options. These are badgers. Uh, badgers are neat. Basically, uh, what this is, is if you want to think about it, it's a Tupelo 16. This is the navalized Tupelo 16. It carries this gorgeous standoff strike weapon, which is uh, awesome. We can use this to actually uh, do quite a bit of damage if we want to be mean. I love how they call it the Kraken. I think that's an appropriate thing. Of course, we also have the naval version as well, which uh, kind of gives us some really, really nice opportunities to kind of get those sort of cheap shots in right away. And again, these are anti-ship missiles. So here's what you have to ask yourself as a designer. Do we want the user to even have access to these aircraft? Because if you're silly, what you're going to do is you're going to come in here and say, ooh, let's give them a bunch of cruise missiles. If you do that, that means the user will run out and use the cruise missiles to basically get a high score without even having to work for it. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab half of these aircraft and I'm going to equip them for refueling purposes. And I'm going to grab the second half of them and I'll go ahead and I'll load them up with something that they can't really take advantage of until the very, very end of the scenario. Remember, our scenario is only 12 hours. So if we order them up with a bunch of bombs, uh, they're not going to be able to do anything here. It's actually going to be available in 20 hours, which is going to be a super bummer for us. So what I'm actually going to do instead is I'm going to go ahead
ahead and take these aircraft, and I'm going to change the ready time to make it a little bit more interesting for the user. I think I just did 10, not 10 hours, good. So these bombers will have these glorious, glorious, glorious anti-missile, uh, uh, ship missiles, but they won't have them for 10 hours, which makes it a little bit more fun from a gameplay perspective. Again, there's a really, really good pro tip for you. Let's go ahead and save. The other option, of course, we have here, let me go pop over here real fast, grab this one as well. Hey, hey, hey oh, mm, mm. I hate it when I do that. Click over here. There we go. We also have these J11 BSHs, which is a, basically a two-seater. This is a flanker. It's a UBK. This is a training aircraft. Uh, we can use it, of course, uh, for a bunch of different purposes here. You can see it's very well equipped, including have the ARM. Now, this would be a very, very logical choice to launch from this island. would basically be to attack, you know, kind of this region, try to saturate and disable as much of the air defense structure as possible, because you know, strategically, we're going to have to go to Haiphong a little later on, which is right in here, so that we can actually go ahead and do stuff. So we use this as kind of like a second front. So let's go ahead and get these guys ready. So we'll take that group of eight and we'll go ahead and uh, set those up so that we can go ahead and use these uh, Kryptons, which would literally be a nightmare upon nightmare. So we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to make these guys combat air patrol. We're going to grab a group of four of them and we're going to go ahead and equip them with some arms here. We'll do the other uh, one we had here. And we'll say this last group is basically uh, too busy, you know, picking their noses so they can't actually do anything useful for us. Now, this is an interesting strike package. So I'd be very curious to see what that shakes up to be. So we'll go over to the side. Uh, we have some finbacks basically here. Uh, finback, very unique aircraft. Aircraft. I don't think there's anything quite like it. Kind of reminds me of a little bit of a Phantom here. This is a fixed wing. It is a fighter aircraft. It does have some strike capabilities. And again, we'll try to take advantage of all that. We have both Bs as well as Ds. The Ds are slightly nicer. Uh, they have a couple more uh, toys on their thing here. But we need to debate what are we going to do with these? So I know you're sitting there going, well, we could probably use them to, you know, go searching in here and stuff like that. I totally agree with you on that particular point there. Uh, one of the problems, though, is a radar on this thing is not that great. It does have some capability to go ahead and you know, detect the ground, but it's only air-to-air -air radar, which means from reconnaissance purposes, it's not great. However, if we're trying to find things on the ground, or I should say in the air, these aren't bad aircraft for that point. So we could use all of these aircraft basically for the purposes of providing us with some combat air patrol. So I'm going to go ahead and grab them, get my Myself some PL7s, which by the way, is just the magic one. It is not the greatest. And we also have a really, really tough time because our range is only about 150 nautical miles. That will bite us bad. So let's go ahead and grab this last group. Unfortunately, these guys are uh, picking their noses as well. So our J8Ds, again, this is a slightly more modern version of this particular aircraft. Again, pretty big, pretty good collection of uh, different weapons on here. We can get this thing going pretty far. We also have the ability to carry the PL8, which is uh, basically a knockoff of the Python missile. So I'll go ahead and grab this group real quickly here and go ahead and give them PL8. So we'll say they're ready to rock. We'll uh, take this group right here. Uh, we'll say we'll try to tempt the player with something just to see if we can uh, get them to trick and accidentally do this. We'll give them a bunch of uh, 500 kilogram bombs, but uh, we'll set time to ready on those guys to, uh, let's say it's about six hours away, just to see if the user can pick up on those and uh, try to play with them just a little tiny bit. The rest, of course, are going to be sitting in maintenance, and uh, they're all hanger queens, can't do much. All right, so last but not least, we have a lot of these Y8Qs. Now, this is a neat aircraft, too. Basically, these particular aircraft are used for anti-submarine warfare, which we're going to need badly for this particular scenario. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to hit ready arm here. I'm going to go ahead and equip these with the YU-7 Sonobuies, as well as Sonobuies, I should say. I'm going to grab the last two here. I'm actually going to set these guys to completely unavailable. So that means uh, we do have some of these aircraft pretty much ready to rock if we needed to use them for this scenario. Now, if we were a little bit sneakier, what we would do is we change the timing so that they don't come into availability until much later in the scenario to make things a little bit more fair for us. But once these things get airborne, we're going to know pretty much where the entire Vietnamese Navy is. But remember, there's another piece we have to do, and we have to bring in the civilian elements, which is probably something we're going to do next time. Okay, so now we've got our Air Force units ready. Uh, we have our everything ready on this side. If we switch back over to the Vietnamese real quick, you can see that there's a pretty good thorough. They know not to attack there. We also have excellent little air-to-air -air emissions here. I'm just going to confirm we have our CAP North, which, trust me, they're going to be busy. Our CAP South, we also have our Sea Control Patrol kind of over there. The Sea Control Group, of course, is uh, mostly these Kilo submarines, which I'm sure are going to give uh, China a pretty good run for the money. If we were playing this scenario as Vietnam, I'd be trying to get these guys as far away from everybody as I can before they get hammered by all these, you know, basically anti-surface assets that are going to come get us later on. Okay, so next time what we're going to do is we're going to do some Lua, basically, to create a bunch of random fishing vessels to make it possible for Vietnamese to basically get something out far enough to go ahead and do some fun. And we'll, of course, design some equipment so that if the user decides to just attack everything they see, uh, they start getting penalized because of civilian casualties. Enjoy.